Now that all the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC is out, I thought it'd be a good time to rank it all. This is mostly based on how much fun the tracks are, as well as any sort of changes they made that improved or worsened the experience. So with that, let's get her ranked. 48. 3DS Toad Circuit When I first saw how bad this track looked, I was really concerned for all the DLC. Those feelings are gone now, obviously, but my god. The grass really is the laziest looking grass. Just look at Mario Kart 7's grass. Like, how does this look objectively nicer and it's 12 years older? I bet Nintendo intended to release all the DLC like this initially, until the backlash was so strong that the newer waves look as good as the vanilla tracks. And it's not even that Toad Circuit looks bland and generic, it's just a boring track to drive around. It can be fun when played in 200cc, but there's just not much going on besides a ramp that can lift you up on the second lap. 47. SNES Mario Circuit 3 I guess I'm not that surprised that we got at least one SNES track that replicates the original game, because we technically haven't gotten this style in Mario Kart 8, considering Donut Plains 3 looks drastically different from its counterpart, but it's still just Mario Circuit 3, another boring-ass track. The big difference is that the walls stick up compared to Super Mario Kart's, but they did this with Mario Circuit 3 and Mario Kart Wii, so it's no surprise they do that here too. The only reason it's higher than Toad Circuit is because the turns take a bit more effort, I guess. 46. GBA Sunset Wilds By far the most disappointing remake to come out of the Booster Course Pack. Now, is it more interesting than the previous tracks mentioned? I mean, of course, I really like the aesthetic, and it's fairly fun to drive through. The Shy Guys jamming out on the road is really cute, and I love how you can hear them sing to the song when you drive by, just like with the other tracks in this game. But it really doesn't do much beyond that. The title of the track is Sunset Wilds, and while we do have a sunset, it never changes. In the original GBA version, each lap has the sunset go down over time, which is a really cool gimmick and really added to the flair of the track, but here, it stays the same throughout the duration of the race. Why is the track's main future completely removed? Even Mario Kart Tour's version changes from sunset to nighttime, why can't this version do the same? 45. Paris Promenade Okay, so I'm really glad that Nintendo has gone out of their way to port the Tour-exclusive tracks to a console Mario Kart game. Doing that is going to help preserve them when Mario Kart Tour eventually dies out. And they're even combining some of the variants together by morphing them in each lap. As an example, the first lap uses elements from Paris Promenade 1 and 3, as well as 3T and 2R in the last lap. That's really damn cool that they've gone out of their way to preserve even the extra variants, but let's be real here. The tour tracks are usually not as fun as the normal ones. Paris Promenade is a very pretty looking place, but it's just so flat and basic. There's a lot of super wide turns, and yeah, you can take a ramp over the Jardins du Trocaredo, I butcher that. You also drive underneath the Eiffel Tower, and so on. I've actually visited Paris once when I was really little, and I remember a couple of the landmarks, so seeing them featured in Paris Promenade is a treat, but it truly is a bland track to drive through. 44. Tokyo Blur This course honestly is a blur. It's another one of those where I can barely remember it. If I lived in Tokyo and knew and saw all these landmarks, this would definitely be more up my alley, but once again, the track design plays it very safe. Which makes sense because these tracks come from phones after all, but the transition is still a tad awkward when compared to Mario Kart 8's other stuff. You'll drive past the Wako store, the National Diet building, and underneath the Kamen Eremon. Tokyo Blur does nothing interesting track-wise. Even on the final lap, we're just driving on a different road while the first two laps just block off different paths. But it does look slightly nicer than Paris, so I'll give it that at least, and it has a nice sense of flow, which I can appreciate as well. A lot of the tour tracks do not flow well, but we'll get to those later. 43. London Loop It has the same vibe as Paris Promenade and Tokyo Blur, but is featured in London this time. The Big Ben and London Eye take full center, and you'll drive through the Charing Cross and in front of St. Paul's Cathedral. Once again, there's a lot of fun landmarks, and each lap takes pieces of the three London Loop variants from Mario Kart Tour, but the track design is still really forgettable. The last lap is definitely the best part, though, since a bunch of chain chomps get on the roads as obstacles, and there's a bridge that opens up that you have to drive across. The biggest change from the Tour versions comes down to more moving pieces in the background and some extra fog. The fog is very subtle, and it helps the track stand out a little bit more on its own. 42. 
Rome Avanti. Well, it's another tour track. It's been said a lot, but there's really not much here that's too exciting. Even the music is kind of on the bland side. It's not memorable at all. Rome Avanti does look and play well, but not much really sticks out here. As usual, there are some interesting locations that could be spotted. Driving through the Colosseum as an example is kind of cool, and you'll even fly over the Trevi Fountain. Probably the best addition, however, is the Chain Chomps biting away at the road in the Colosseum, which is a fun reference to how battles kind of took place back in the day. But otherwise, there's nothing too crazy here. 41. Madrid Drive We've got yet another tour track, and this one is all over the place. For a good portion of it, it just feels like the same city we've seen time and time again. There are some really cool places, but otherwise, it's just alright. Of the few areas worth mentioning, we've got the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. It's pretty awesome driving through this soccer field, and it's even got the Goomba shoes from Mario Bros. 3 kicking the balls around. How can you not love that little detail? Then we've got Prado New Zam, a company with this piranha plant sticking his head out of one of the paintings. So there's a couple of neat moments, but in the end, it's just another city track. 40. New York Minute the very first tour track to be introduced, and it really shows. This one is a lot like Paris Promenade, where the layout is very flat and uninteresting, but at the very least, the track is gorgeous and each lap feels pretty different from one another. The vibrant city streets are based on Times Square and are so much fun to watch as you drive by. The second lap gets us out of the city and onto the sidewalk briefly, while the third lap takes us past Central Park and straight into 30 Rockefeller Plaza, which, funny enough, is the same street that the real-life Nintendo store is on, with that address being 10 Rockefeller Plaza? Kind of a missed opportunity to add the actual Nintendo store into the game itself. New York Minute makes me wish that New Donk City got a Mario Kart track too, but that's beyond the point. There's even a Donkey Kong poster that says he has the best musical, which is true. I mean, who hasn't heard the DK rap at this point? So all the references to New York are great and all, but there's just not much variety here. 39. Los Angeles Laps I cannot tell you how excited I was to try Los Angeles Laps, because I've heard the music from Mario Kart Tour and absolutely adored it. But this version, for whatever reason, gets rid of the choir's boss. How could they do that? That's what made the song so charming and great. I don't know why that really irked me the wrong way, but it really dampened the experience overall. As for the track itself, it's okay. At the very least, the track design is a bit more varied than the other tour tracks already mentioned. I like that we're driving through the beach to start, and then slide right into the shops and even over Dodger Stadium. It does feel a lot like Los Angeles, at least at first, because later on you go through Inglewood Oil Field, which is a very bizarre piece of LA to reference. Yes, this was included in LA Laps 2 from Tour, but why not include something more iconic, like Hollywood? How cool would it have been to drive down the Hollywood Mountain and replace all the letters with Nintendo or something? 38. DS Shroom Ridge I'm still shocked that this track was remade at all. It was a fairly forgettable one in Mario Kart DS, but I always liked it. Driving around the clifftop was always a neat idea, so it's nice to see it have the spotlight again. But I can't deny that some of the textures are very plain looking like with Toad Circuit. But it is a part of the first wave, so I kind of get why it's like that. I don't really care though, because of how fun and varied the track is. Having to drive around the cars is always a good time, and they even added this ramp in the grass, as well as a fan that blows wind over this turn. If this one looked maybe a bit better, I'd probably rank it higher, but I digress. 37. Berlin Byways For starters, the music absolutely bangs for this one. I mean, my god, this and the tour version go so hard. Outside of how fantastic the music is, it's really the only part of Berlin Byways that I can remember. The track design is more involved than New York Minute and LA Laps at least, and there's a few more obstacles like the cars on the road that you have to be careful of and things like that. We start next to the Berlin Cathedral, and you'll also spot the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin Zoo. The landmarks are once again on point, and it's nice to see that the track design gets more interesting with the entries added later on. 36. Vancouver Velocity Finally, Canada gets some time in the spotlight, this track being fairly nice looking. We're once again driving through a town, but similar to New York Minute, the nighttime aesthetic is really striking, and it's got some interesting moments. You start off driving near the Vancouver Convention Center, followed up by the Olympics Cauldron, which looks really damn cool in this game and in real life, then we quickly make our way to the Capilano Suspension Bridge, which is really fun to drift around, and after that, it's kind of hard to remember what else Vancouver Velocity includes. I like the part where you drive 
drive through the Rogers Arena with a bunch of Shy Guys ice skating, but otherwise, it feels very similar in structure to New York Minute with a bit more variety. 35. Amsterdam Drift I'm sorry for the barrage of tour tracks at the bottom of the list, but that's just how they compare when they're up against Nintendo's more unique and creative entries. This one takes place in the Netherlands. You begin in Damrock Street and drive past the Amsterdam Central Station and glide to the Zanschans. You'll notice a lot of trams on the road, too. In Europe, it's much more common to walk or take a train as a means of travel compared to Americans driving everywhere. I really like how there's sections where we dip into the harbor for a bit, too. It's a nice change of pace, especially when it comes to these tour offerings. This one is on the same level as Berlin Byways, where it looks really nice and has a few outstanding moments, but it doesn't have the greatest flow. 34. Bangkok Rush Within seconds, you're driving on top of a thin layer of water while tricking off of boats. Thailand sounds f***ing wild. This one has a really great start, considering I've never seen anything like it before. The track layout is also pretty varied, as you'll bounce atop the train night market Rachata to driving up the stairs onto the BTS Skytrain Railway. Having these extra pathways adds a lot of replay value to Bangkok Rush, since you have to figure out which paths are the fastest. For a tour track, it's not half bad. 33. DS Peach Gardens While I'm very glad that Peach Gardens got a remake, I'm kind of disappointed with how they went about aspects of it. The biggest issue for me is the gardens themselves. They've been simplified in a couple of sections so that it's very easy to avoid the grass. The DS version wasn't necessarily difficult either, but you had to make more of an effort with your drifts to stay on the road. And that's just not a problem with this remake. I'm sure they did this because it's in Mario Kart Tour as well, but I definitely miss that aspect. Even the remake on Wii kept everything more faithful design-wise. It's one saving grace, though, is the final lap, where you play the entire course backwards. There's a sweet ramp that you'll take to fly over the main garden and get a nice look at everything you had to drive across previously. That's a really fun twist, but I don't know. Peach Gardens could have turned out a lot better, but at least it looks really nice, and the hedges are also a great touch. 32. GBA Sky Garden This is now the third time it's been remade, and I'm honestly kind of conflicted. On one hand, Sky Garden is one of my favorite tracks from Super Circuit. I've always adored its aesthetic of driving on roads on top of clouds with massive vines hanging in the background. The DS version doesn't update it much outside of 3Difying the graphics, while Tour actually did a proper revamping but simplifies and removes one of the shortcuts. The Switch version takes most of its inspiration from the Tour remake, unsurprisingly, but it looks a lot better. The road is orange instead of gray, which is much more appealing, and a lot of the original jumps have mushroom trampolines you can trick off of. The shortcut that was removed, though, is, uh, kind of brought back? It looks completely different now, but you can take this path with a mushroom for a big boost. My only real gripe with Sky Garden is that it feels very short. I don't know if it actually is, but it kind of just feels like it needs an extra 20 to 30 seconds of length. But this is still an incredibly fun one to play and retains the magic from the original Super Circuit version. 31. GameCube DK Mountain It's super exciting to see one of Double Dash's best tracks return, but with that said, I felt really deflated after playing this one, because they made it way too easy. Like, look at how flat the roads are. Remember how steep and curvy everything was on the original and even in the Wii version? What happened here? I understand that physics are different in all the games and changes needed to be made, but the sacrifices are simply too deep. It's still fun, don't get me wrong, but it kind of feels like its own thing now. I do like the remix music, though, and adding the waviness to the bridge at the end was a nice inclusion. I just wish that the level design was more faithful to the original. It's also interesting to note how the Wii's ramps have now been formed into the literal rocks on the road, and I think this aspect works pretty well, actually. 30. Wii Daisy Circuit I know this track has its fans, but I've never found it to be super interesting. With that said, Wii Daisy Circuit is still a blast to drive through, and it still has that classic shortcut, and even updates it to be a gliding section. The roads also seem to be a lot brighter than before. The covers were very orange in the original track, while the oranginess has been removed a bit in the remake. You'll go from driving on a regular-looking road to orange tiles, and I actually think having that difference was a smart choice, but otherwise, it's still classic Daisy Circuit. The buildings in the background are much more vibrant and colorful. They pop out a lot more, but also have that tour look to them. The texture quality is amazing in some areas, and not so much in others. It's a nice track to have included. A lot of people have wanted this one to return. 
29, N64 Choco Mountain, one of the most nostalgic tracks for me. This one got a serious glow up compared to the original. It was also remade on the DS, but that one didn't add anything too significant. It's the tour version that introduces a new cave section with brimming crystals and a glide ramp. This new design is pulled into Mario Kart 8's variant, and I honestly really dig it. I think this is a perfect way to enhance that boring tunnel from the original, and the glide ramp spices things up a bit too. I also love how the music completely embraces the country tone. It works perfectly for Choco Mountain. This is a really enjoyable track, despite being on the basic side. 28. GBA Riverside Park Once again, I am shocked that Riverside Park returned. I was kind of hoping it'd be Lakeside Park, but this one's perfectly fine too. Just looking at the original, and even the tour remake, this version did not around. It looks so freaking gorgeous. Every texture is just brimming with detail. The new section where you drive into the cave accompanied by a bunch of bridges and then driving through the waterfall feels amazing. The only issue with this track is that the layout is on the simpler side. It's got a lot of wide turns and not much else, but it looks so damn nice that I don't really mind at all. 27. 3DS Rosalina's Ice World well, this is quite a surprising pick. It's one of those tracks that's pretty solid, but also really easy to forget about. This remake is still fun to play, and the general level design feels exactly the same as the original, right to a T. A couple of turns feel maybe a little bit different, and there is this new ramp at the end, but otherwise it's very similar. There's also some cool stuff going on in the sky, like have you noticed that big spinning planet? Yep, that's Gateway Galaxy from Mario Galaxy 1. And of course, the Comet Observatory is sitting there right next to us, pretending like we don't see it or anything. Now, of course, these things were in the original version, but they're much brighter and more apparent than ever. And that's really the best way to describe Rosalina's Ice World. All it really needed was a visual glow up, and that's what it got. 26. Sydney Sprint. Like with Berlin Byways, the music slays with an upbeat and exciting beat to get you in the mood for some racing. Out of all the tour tracks we've played so far, this one has the best flow and fluidity while also making a very track layout at the same time. Just hitting the tricks and turns feels so right the whole way through, I really can't get enough of it. As you'd expect, the Sydney Opera House is included, and we also get to drive through it in a couple different ways. We start in Port Jackson, pass through Luna Park, and cross the Sydney Harbor Bridge. It covers its locations well, like with the other tour tracks, and manages to be quite enjoyable to race on too. 25. GBA Snowland I don't know what it is with Nintendo and the Super Circuit tracks, but they have gone out of their way to make them special and remarkable. Ribbon Road and Cheeseland are completely different experiences, and Snowland is no different. I always liked this track in the original because of the cheery music, and the remake here is a joy to hear as well. They've kept the pink slash blue hue background and completely revamped all the crystals sitting in the background. They've even added some crystals on parts of the track too. It really gives off a wholesome winter vacation feeling. The new ramp at the end of the track is added so naturally too. It just looks like a pile of snow and it gives you a slight advantage. This captures the same magic as the other remakes. It plays completely different, but still keeps the same look the original had. 24. GBA Boo Lake Another track that I never thought Nintendo would touch again, but it was redone in tour beforehand, so it makes sense. The overhaul compared to the original is once again super impressive. It feels nothing like the original, which is awesome. The biggest inclusion is that the road dips into the water briefly and switches to anti-gravity. This comes completely out of nowhere, and it really stands out. The original bridge shortcut has been replaced with a short grass one that requires a mushroom to go through smoothly, which is a big upgrade if you ask me. And the section at the end where you trick off multiple ramps in a row is super satisfying too. I can't believe how good this remake ended up being. This is based on the Mario Kart 2 remake as you'd expect, but honestly, it looks so much better in Mario Kart 8. 23. Sky High Sunday. A lot of people believe that this is a brand new exclusive track for the DLC, but that's actually not true. All the tracks that appear as new have gotten added to Mario Kart Tour and were originally made for that game. This is Nintendo trying to be funny and being like, look guys, a new track, when in reality, they've probably had it stockpiled in Tour for years and decided to add it in Mario Kart 8 first to just look better. It's honestly a very smart business move, but onto the track itself. It reminds me of Sweet Sweet Canyon, but a billion times more colorful. You drive on top of several desserts, through an ice cream cone, and many other sweets. It's a really fun style, but there's something about it that feels off. 
The way you turn through the track feels kind of awkward. It just doesn't feel like it was built for Mario Kart 8's physics and mechanics, especially that wide turn at the end. I don't know, it just feels weird to do. I do like all these shops they added as extra details, and all the Koopas hanging out at the cafe at the beginning. Clearly, a lot of time and effort was put into this one, but it's definitely meant for Mario Kart Tour and not Mario Kart 8. 22. DS Mario Circuit I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of annoyed seeing this track in the reveal trailer initially because it's just another Mario Circuit. We've already got Mario Circuit 3, a Mario Kart 8 Mario Circuit, and a GBA Mario Circuit. Did we really need another one? But I've gotta admit, now that I've played it, Nintendo has managed to vastly improve this one over the original and make it feel unique compared to all the other Mario circuits in this game. First things first, the Piranha Plant's fireballs are actually kind of dangerous this time. In the original, you don't even realize they're trying to hit you, but now you gotta pay attention to them. And after that, the road becomes a super thick forest, and on the final lap you get a surprise wiggler running down the road. Just these few changes make DS Mario Circuit infinitely more interesting. The tour version does the same thing too, but it doesn't quite capture the atmosphere in the same way. 21. Merry Mountain, a wonderful, Christmassy kind of track. It's on the more basic side, as most Mario Kart Tour tracks are, but you get a lot more out of it than the others we've already talked about. I'm a big fan of this railroad bridge you can take up top, and the transition between the village and mountain is really seamless. There's a good amount of variety in terms of track design, but it still feels a tad basic. You'll find a few really wide turns that could have been made into something more complex, but honestly, the vibe this track has doesn't make this much of an issue. That's how I feel about a lot of this DLC. The track layouts are simple, but the remakes are so solid that nobody cares all that much. 20. N64 Calamari Desert Another N64 track that hasn't aged gracefully, but the remake livens it up quite a bit. There is also a remake from Mario Kart 7 that adds a few ramps. It's the tour version, though, that shook things up. It looks a lot better in Mario Kart 8, and does an awesome job incorporating tour's reroutes. I'm sure most people that have played Mario Kart 64 have driven through the tunnel just because you can. It was always fun to explore something you weren't supposed to. But now, on the second lap, you literally have to drive through this tunnel with the train still on the railroad. What an ingenious way of spicing up a basic track. We're basically living our childhood dreams from decades ago. And the music is so good too. The remakes are all great for the most part, but it is nice to hear a Calamari Desert song again. 19. 3DS Rock Rock Mountain Compared to Mario Kart 7 and Tour, not much has really changed here, but it wasn't really needed since this is already a super solid course. You drive across and through a mountain, and the most notable part is the massive jump down to a forest filled with pipes. The graphics look... Mm, decent, although once again, it pulls a lot of assets from Mario Kart Tour's version and just goes with that. It's mostly all the rocks in the cave and trees that look very barren. I mean, look at how detailed and pretty the trees are in Mario Kart 7. But like with the Shroom Ridge, it's still fun to play. The shortcuts are great as well. I really enjoy going for the air blowing pipes at the beginning, seeing how high risk slash high reward they are. 18. Athens Dash one of the most surprisingly fun tracks to race on. Athens puts us inside the Pantheon. You also drive across the theater of Dionysius and through a street very similar to Monastriaki, among many other places. It has an excellent flow where all the turns just feel really good to drift across. It's one of the most satisfying tracks. It's pretty cool how we can also drive on top of some of the pillars instead of just seeing them. That makes the place feel a lot more lively. 17. Piranha Plant Cove By far one of the most refreshing tracks from Tour, Piranha Plant Cove is filled with variety with its track layout and design. You'll go from driving through this huge temple, to running across flights of stairs and through the water, Unagi are swimming around the depths of everything, you explore a massive underwater cavern, and the temple pulls off this really grim and ancient look. But most importantly, this track has really great flow to it. There's so much to look at, and it's just fun to drive through everything. You wouldn't expect an underwater stage to be this enjoyable and unique, but something about this one just works so well. 16. We DK Summit Not the biggest shocker that a fan favorite like DK Summit was added to. There's a lot I love about this remake, but the biggest thing I'm not a fan of is the barrel launch. In the original version, you really feel like you're getting blasted out of the cannon. The wind is flying across your face and you're going full speed until the top of the mountain. With this in the tour version, you kind of just get a little boost and just glide to the top. It just doesn't feel as satisfying, but that's really the only drawback I have. Everything else has been faithfully redone, and they even include the half-pipe ramps. The thick piles of snow are still here, the bumpy snow hills can be tricked off in succession, the shy guys are still snowboarding, and I like how much nicer the wood looks at the beginning slash end of the track. It's still a great time, even after all these years. 
15. Wii Moonview Highway. Oh my god, I was stoked to see this return. And for the most part, it lives up to what you'd expect. For starters, the music goes so hard and I can't get enough of it. The remix is simply perfect and even changes to a calmer pianoish rendition after passing the toll gate. And I also love how this whole place looks too. I don't know what it is about the nighttime tracks, but they've pulled them off so nicely in Mario Kart 8. All the details on the road and buildings are just brimming with vibrance. And also the bomb cars are back. That's pretty cool to see again. But my one major complaint with this one is the cars themselves. If you recall from the original game, they are flying down the road and can often be hard to predict their patterns. In this game, they're going slowish and are too easy to predict. I guess that's kind of an issue though with Toad's Turnpike and Shroom Ridge as well. Those cars move pretty slowly, so they barely count as challenging obstacles. So that does make this one a bit disappointing, but the spirit of Moonview Highway is still here in all of its glory. 14. GCN Daisy Cruiser This is another track that I'm not surprised to see return, and it's still a blast. The concept of driving on a cruise ship is fantastic, and the extra details make this track even better. For starters, they went with the Mario Kart 7 version, where you can pick between the right and left side of the ship at the beginning, and of course you can drive into the pool, which now accompanies some Goombas and rafts. But once you get downstairs into the dining hall, the tables are no longer empty. A bunch of Toads and Koopas are sitting down getting ready to eat lunch, and oh my god, I love it. While I do think this track is a bit on the basic side, comparing it to everything else, it still holds up surprisingly well. The section under the ship is the same as Mario Kart 7 as well, being underwater with some clampies chilling down there. The changes made were overall for the better compared to other retro tracks. They mostly enhanced Daisy's cruise. 13. Wii Koopa Cape, one of the most iconic Mario Kart Wii tracks. It's been really interesting to see it evolve over the years. This version is really great as you'd expect, but I don't think I like it as much as the older ones, especially the tube section. In the original, these electric wheels rotated that threatened to shrink you if touched, so you had to avoid them while also staying in the water stream for extra speed. That was awesome. And then the Mario Kart 7 variant took that out completely and added Cheap Cheeps as an obstacle. Okay, that's weird, but then Tour does the same thing and it adds a half pipe, and this newest version has no cheap cheeps at all with anti-gravity. While the half pipe does feel really natural to use, removing all the challenge from the original is kind of a backwards idea. But outside of this one segment of the stage, everything else is fantastic. The remix music sounds awesome, and it changes a lot as you play. It gets more frantic in the rushing water with the fiddle, and then soothes a little bit in the tube area. I really appreciate the extra details. The general flow of Koopa Cape is still really fun. There's tons of dynamic areas you drive across. It's overall great stuff. I just don't know why the tube section has been simplified so much. 12. Wii Mushroom Gorge Another track that's been remade a few times. The original Wii one is still unique and fun to play, with all the mushrooms bouncing and whatnot. People love this one so much because of the physics. Just by subtly turning and tricking, you can alter the direction of your bounce, which adds a deep layer of strategy. This is basically removed in the rest of the versions, but I get why that's the case. Mario Kart 7's remake is relatively similar, but it adds a blue mushroom which opens up your glider. And you know what? Why can't there be a button where you can just open your glider at any time? Just some food for thought. The tour version really changes up the cave section by lining up all the mushrooms, and that really defeats the original purpose of forcing you to aim where to go. But for the mobile version, I guess it's an okay alternative. For Mario Kart 8, they basically kept the same layout but added even more mushrooms. So pretty much all sense of challenge in this section is gone. But even still, it's a really solid track, and it looks incredible with the updated textures. 11. SNES Bowser Castle 3 Good lord, what a glow up this one got. This track feels nothing like the original, and I'm 100% okay with that because it's from the SNES. This is somehow the only Bowser's Castle remake we got in the entirety of Mario Kart 8, and I'm kinda glad this one turned out so phenomenally. Like with the original, there's plenty of different routes you can take, which makes each race feel invigorating. There's so much depth here, and being surrounded by all these massive waterfalls of lava really brings the SNES version to life too. You can even trick off the thwomp at the end, and the Hard Rock remix fits in perfectly. This track just has amazing flow. Everything feels so buttery and smooth. It's weird to say I'm happy a SNES track was remade, but I really am. 10. Singapore Speedway 
Oh my lord, Nintendo went wild with this tour track. It's kind of crazy just how different it feels compared to the other ones. There's actual depth going on. You start off in beautiful Singapore, in between St. Andrew's Cathedral and Merlion Park. Then you're thrown into the air towards the Marina Bay Sands. I mean, just this one section is incredible. The city skylights are gorgeous and streaming through the water is so cool. The glide ramps have a lot of boost rings in the air that you can glide through while we fly over the float. I've never actually seen a soccer field that just floats in the water. Just playing these tracks makes me want to visit them all in real life. And each lap just throws new things at you constantly. The simple inclusion of the ring boost make gliding so much better since you're rewarded for clearing the rings. What a fun track this one is. There's very few dull moments in this one. 9. Ninja Hideaway This straight up doesn't feel like a Mario Kart Tour track. I'm so impressed with how much this one outshines all the others. You're driving in a Japanese dojo, and for a majority of the race, you're on top of the rooftops. Just that one factor alone makes it an incredible Mario Kart track. I mean, how much more satisfying can it get? We haven't even talked about the inside of the dojo. It looks fantastic, and is filled to the brim with Japanese artifacts and design. And there are so many different routes you can take. That's what really makes this one stand out so much. I kid you not, you can complete one lap with like eight different combinations of routes. And then you've got that takeoff ramp where bamboo sticks blast up air, which gives you a chance to get into the upskirts of the roof. What a an awesome track. I mean, it's got to be like top 20 or top 30 of all time. Eight. GCN Waluigi Stadium, by far the most fascinating remake. It's kind of insane how each remake feels so drastically different from one another. The original version relies heavily on the game's floatier physics, so you really feel the jumps you get off boosts. Then Mario Kart Wii threw in half pipes, which is an interesting but kind of pointless upgrade. And now, Mario Kart 8's version also has the half pipes, but they actually do something with it. Once you get past the piranha plants, which are also in wonky ass spots now, you can use the half pipes to get on top of the new girder roads. It's very bizarre, but it gives you a reason to use the half pipes, which is awesome. Even at the end, you can glide instead of just jumping, which might be the faster way to go, although I don't know for sure. Either way, it's great to have Waluigi Stadium and Mario Kart 8, and I'm very happy with how well it turned out. 7. Wii Maple Treeway We've got another fan favorite. It's also been remade several times, and this version is as stellar as you'd expect. Mario Kart 7's remake gets rid of the shaky bridge for the glide ramp, which I still think is a lot more boring, but it does utilize the glider better. That change has carried on up to this day, and that's really all that's been updated. There's a couple of minor style changes in the tour remake, and those carry over to Mario Kart 8, but with much better textures. The music is still catchy, driving along the massive tree branches is a blast, the leaf piles are fun to drive through, although one thing that I've noticed are the smaller odds of getting a banana or mushroom out of the leaf piles. But what more do I need to say? It's Maple Tree Way, so you already know it's awesome. 6. We Coconut Mall Nobody's surprised that Coconut Mall is this high up on the list. It's one of the most famous Mario Kart tracks of all time, outside of like Waluigi Pinball and Rainbow Road. You drive through a freaking mall. It's one of the greatest locations Nintendo has ever made when it comes to their Mario Kart stuff. It's been remade in Mario Kart 7 and Tour, of course, and honestly, the differences are pretty minimal outside of the graphics. The only outstanding change in Mario Kart 8 is the cars at the end. At first, they didn't move at all and just kind of sat there, so Nintendo decided to update this track and make them spin around the road. I never in a million years would have expected Nintendo to actually update an element of a track that they already released. And it was a good change, too. The end of the lap is challenging again. A lot of people would probably rank this at number one, but I have a few more in mind. 5. We Rainbow Road I was a tad bit skeptical that something would go wrong or feel off, but Nintendo did it. They nailed this remake, and I couldn't be happier. It plays and feels exactly as you'd want it to. This is one of those so-good-you-get-goosebumps kind of tracks. Wii Rainbow Road zany twists and turns are still here, and you still have to be careful on how you navigate your way around. The music is what really sells it, though. It's so exciting and makes you feel happy in all the right ways. It's different enough from the original that it feels fresh, but also has the same charm. It's just a fantastic remix, and by far one of the best tracks in the whole game. 4. Yoshi's Island This really came out of nowhere, and somehow it's one of my favorite tracks of all time? I kid you not, I was grinning from ear to ear for the whole race when I first played this dude to the sheer amount of fan service this track throws at you. To start, I mean just look at it. All of the enemies come from Yoshi's Island, down to the shy guys on stilt, the blargs in the background, to the huff and puffins walking across the road. The music is fantastic as you'd expect, the coins are now Yoshi coins and make the same jingle from the SNES game, and when 
when you start a lap, the sound is exactly the same as starting a level in Yoshi's Island. Even the ending remix comes from Yoshi's Island as well. And as for the track itself, it's really fun to play. You can hit one of those cloudy question marks and spawn an entirely new track where you can go through a goal ring from Yoshi's Island. I mean, god damn Nintendo, they went so hard on this one. The only downside is that the track layout is a tad on the basic side, but Yoshi's Island is absolutely filled to the brim with love and charm. One of the all-time greats, by far. 3. 3DS Rainbow Road I'm sure you're very aware that this has been my favorite Rainbow Road for several years, and not only did they bring it back, they made it look clean. I mean, hot diggity doo dah, look at how nice the road looks. Oh, and it all flows so nicely, just like in Mario Kart 7. I really can't get enough of this Rainbow Road. If you loved it before, then you're really gonna love it now. The planets, the moon, the vortex tube, it's all so fantastic and looks a thousand times better than it ever has before. I know people love Wii's Rainbow Road and consider that the best one, but I just don't see how that can top this one. It does so much to stand out amongst the others and is an absolute king. 2. Squeaky Clean Sprint so this is another one that just came out of nowhere. Holy crap, this track is incredible. Now, you all know how much I love big houses. Yeah, well guess what? This track gives me the next best thing, a big bathroom. There is so much personality bursting through this track. You drive headfirst into a sink, and then straight into a massive tub that's filled with bath bombs you can trick off of, and little sponges in a beach ball. The weirdest part of the tub, however, is the toothbrush. I don't know who's brushing their teeth while taking a bath, but hey, more power to them. And then next thing you know, you go down the frickin' drain, it's all dirty with grime accompanied with a stuck wet ring only to escape the dream and fly out on the floor that's filled with suds. Then you glide over a toilet which has bursting bidet water on the second and third laps. Oh my god, there's so much detail in this one. Not only are the bathroom items and decor fun to look at, but it's a really fun track to drive on too. There's quite a few alternate routes you can take, so it feels a bit more fresh than the other tracks. It's one of the best tracks because of the complexity in the track design, and also how immersive the theming is too. Huge, huge props to Nintendo for this one. 1. DS Waluigi Pinball Wow! I can't believe Waluigi Pinball's number one. What a shocking revelation! But really, what else can it be? It's pinball-y goodness with the custom item rollet sound effects and the perfectly flowing track layout makes this an S++ track. The remake in Mario Kart 7 and in Tour have barely any changes at all and are also fun to play. This one really turns the vibrance up and makes everything look as slick as f***ing possible. The only notable change is the glider ramp, but that's been around since Mario Kart 7's remake. We all know that this is the best track of all time. Enough said. Well, thank you Nintendo for giving us all these new tracks, we appreciate it, but uh, please, just just please, for the love of God, release a new game. I'm so bored of Mario Kart 8's engine, it's time for something new, come on. And no, Mario Kart Tour does not count as Mario Kart 9, and even if it did, that came out 2019, it's been four years since 2019, oh my god, Nintendo, just do it, come on, new game, new game, please, please, 